Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. A good mix is like a beautiful woman, strong and wide. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to increase the width of our mix. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Here we have the same shit song as last time. Let's take a listen. Wowzers. Okay, so check it. Last time we learned how panning the individual children around the playground really made everyone feel more safe. But what if we wanted to take any one of these individual children and make them nice and wide? You know, a lot of new parents that I see on the playground try and fatten up their children by creating a duplicate of them, grouping them together, and then panning each side all the way left and right. But here's the situation. Let's just compare that to regular Roger over here. I'm just going to put him back in the middle. And we're going to hear the version uh, panned left and right and compare it to regular old Roger here. Are you guys ready? So let's just take a listen to the left-right version. And then the regular. Virtually no difference there. And here's the situation. Because the left side of Roger and his right side are still hitting our ear holes at the same time, we just perceive them as the regular sound. There's no difference there. What we have to do is open up our delay preferences by hitting that little D on the bottom right corner of the screen, and then just taking one side of Roger and shifting him over slightly using that track delay function. So let's just take a listen to how that sounds. Oh my gosh! Okay, Roger's like a big massive chode here. He's stretching all the way left and right. Let's hear that with the rest of the cool kids on the block. Oh my gosh! It's like you fed him anabolic steroids for a year, man. Roger's big and strong. Here's another way that you could make Roger sound big. Instead of messing with the track delay, let's put that back to zero. Let's just take one side of Roger and actually just detune him slightly, say 15 cents, and just take a listen to that. Very similar effect. You'll notice it almost sounds kind of like a chorus or phaser effect. This is because we're just using the same principle as what those effects are built off of. All it is is just taking a copy of Roger's ex existing sounds here and pitching it up slightly or delaying it slightly to give us that Haas effect, the uh, psychoacoustic phenomenon of hearing the left side of the sound come in in our left ear hole slightly before all right, uh, let's go ahead and actually kind of mess with this further. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place a simple delay on one side of Roger. And then we're going to go link that up and going to take the sync off. We're just going to put it at a time value. And now I'm going to go ahead and take uh, an LFO here. So let's just go ahead and grab that from our max audio effects. I'm just going to map this to the time function. We're just gonna hear how that sounds real quick. Whoa, jeez. <laughs> sounds all crazy and phasey. Wowzer, so that's just another way of messing with that stereo field here, making Roger sound nice and wide. Okay, so check it. In today's lesson, we learned how we could take even the frailest child and turn him into someone strong and wide by taking a copy of that child and altering it slightly. This same basic principle is the foundation behind reverb, chorus, phasers, and my favorite, the flanger. In next week's lesson, we're going to learn how to use reverb to really make a child feel at home in their space. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, you dingus. I'm Underbelly. Peace out.